Suzanne. Hi, I'm Tiffany Dvorak. I'm the director and curator of the Longview Museum of Fine Arts. So welcome. Uh, we're pretty excited about today. This is our first ever live stream with the artists all the way from Wilmington, Delaware. So um, I'm so glad y'all are here. This is a really a unique exhibit and uh, I'll tell you just a little bit. You know, we were looking for something special to do and I heard, I actually saw this in an email and I was like, this is an amazing story and how can we get this here? And so, okay, welcome. Jonathan, should we, uh, should y'all introduce yourselves and then, uh, and then I guess let me introduce, this is Natasha Ray Bonston. She's an LMFA board member and artist and she's gonna help moderate this. But Jonathan, why don't you introduce everyone on your end of the screen? Beautiful. Well, I'm in the upper left-hand corner of your screen, and my name is Jonathan Whitney. The um, one of the people with Joe Del Tufo, Joe Del Tufo, who just came together, and you'll hear a little more, a little bit more about how these works came to be. Came together with an idea. Um, to my right is James Wyatt, and he's one of the contributing artists. To his right is Joe Del Tufo. Uh, photographer, idea man, and contributing artist, uh, supporter. And then below me is Erica Jones. Next to her is you all, our amazing team down there in Texas. And then next to them is Jaquan Leroy, another contributing artist. Um, and we had Jana. I think she'll be back soon. Jaquan's in a limo, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I did a limo. <laughs> and I'm going to disappear because it's about the artist. It's not about me. So I'm going to make some room for them. Okay. Well, do you want me to start? And just, let me just introduce the whole subject matter in, in case y'all haven't already read about it. But a group of business people in Wilmington after the riots in 2020 over the George Floyd murder, they approached some of the business owners that had the boarded up windows and said, could we ask a board of black artists to come and paint something on these boarded up windows to shine a light on what's happening and to start a conversation, but also to flip the script, to bring something beautiful. As we all know, art is a universal language. It's a way we can all communicate and sometimes makes a place of safety. And so uh, I think maybe the first question would be for each of you is how you chose your subject matter. and. Um, I understand that there wasn't any parameters. You had a blank canvas and you could paint anything you wanted. Um, you would like to start first. Uh, I can go. Um, so primarily I, I chose mine just primarily. I, I wanted to do something that was a little throwbackish in the way it looked. So the style that I chose was, was pretty much intentional. Um, but I wanted to kind of capture through my color and the use of some of the graphics uh, work that uh, that is in it. Um, some modern things, but also throwing back to some things that have, you know, from the past, uh, you know, whether it was the March in the Black Panthers or um, just to say like, like, like the colors and then even the title of the piece, um, you know, the revolution that will not be televised, that type of thing. So I just want to kind of bring that all together. So that's primarily where it kind of came from. Um, and then some of the, like I said, some of my color choices and things, I had literally like a couple of days before watched uh, the, the Five Bloods, which is a um, Spike Lee movie. And there's like some amazing posters and stuff that he had done. So I kind of like brought a little bit from that and then just kind of came up with my own piece. Well, it's a beautiful piece. And he's speaking of the one right behind us over here, the revolution. I wish I could put some images and I don't know if Joe can. Right. I know I sent some video of the, the different um, murals. Um, who would like to go next? Or do you want to ask? Uh, I want to ask James a question. So you sure. mentioned Spike Lee um, briefly. Is there any mm -hmm. other modern artists that you are inspired by? Oh uh, yeah, of course. Um, so um, there's Kadira Nelson as, as far as visual artists. So I'm, I, I'll explain, I'm, I'm inspired by a lot of different things. So not just visual artists, uh, music, uh, it could be graphic artists, um, it could be actors, it could be anything. But as far as visual arts, um, Kadira Nelson is probably one of my, my favorites as far as modern artists, just because um, he's close to aging me. I remember when I was in college, literally we were, I was discussing him where a friend was telling me about him and you know, does all this work and his work is here and there and literally walked outside and a piece of his work rolled past on the bus and I was like okay 
So he, you know, just kind of let me know that you can kind of do this for a living and, and you could, you know, turn this into something and make something out of it. And it is, you know, there's a future in it and, you know, gave you just hope. So he's probably one of my favorite, um, favorite artists. And then um, there's two others. There's um, uh, Chuck Close who recently just passed um, primarily his art, but uh, his story, just, you know, how he, you know, basically suffered an injury out of nowhere that, you know, most people don't, you know, you get in a car accident or from sports and he just doesn't know what happened and becoming a quadriplegic and then still continuing art and actually in my eyes becoming even better um, and not giving up. So that, you know, that's inspirational to me. Um, and then Norma Rockwell is another one, just again, uh, artists who use this work to speak out to social injustices. He didn't have to, he got a lot of flack from it, but he felt that it was his responsibility to use his, his uh, gift to, to, to aid in the voice. So, you know, those are probably like my top three. There's others, but those are probably the ones I look to the most. All right. Thank you, James. You're welcome. Erica? Erica? Yes. Um, well, considering the climate at the time, I wanted to do something impactful and powerful. Um, the George Floyd riots were already, it was a very sensitive time and he had a lot of coverage. So I wanted to touch on some other ones that some people may have not have been aware of. Like, I know a lot of people were aware of Breonna Taylor a little bit. So I chose to highlight a little toy and because her story was, I wouldn't say it was similar, but they both met a, an untimely demise. So I wanted to highlight her in a way where she wasn't forgotten. Like I wanted you to see the beauty in her in spite of her tragedy, as well as, um, bring awareness to situations like this. You know, it happens more often than it doesn't. And that's what the other wall was for, to highlight other women that we will never know because of such a, because of these tragedies. So I went through and researched and just wrote down every name of every black woman and black girl I found and gave them their, um, gave them uh, a beacon of light, I guess. Yeah, a lasting legacy. Yes. Can you talk about the God earring and what that represents to you? Um, represents, I guess, who we are at our highest being. Um, to me, us as humans are the closest things to God. So I wanted that to be represented also. When you look at her, you see God as God in all of us. So I wanted that to be a reminder, like God is everywhere. We get a bad rep just as people. So <clears throat> I mean, it's that's a the one thing, I feel like that's the one thing you can't take away from us, so our common humanity yes it's a beautiful work it's really very powerful and to piggyback off the other question and uh, are there any other artists um either in past or present that you were currently inspired by yeah there's plenty besides my contemporaries here obviously um mad steez um he's a He's um, a muralist, um, Ernie Barnes, um, Carrie James Marshall, Kadir Nelson, as James stated. Those are like a few, just to keep it simple. <laughs> Thank, you plenty. Thank you. Yeah. So as a young girl growing up here in Longview, Texas, I didn't really know of all these different artists of the different diaspora of African Americans and myself. And when you know you think of art, usually you think of white male artists. So yeah. when you see the um, skin tone that you chose, was there a particular reason that you chose um, the red and violets for his skin? Um, just wanted it to pop. And <laughs> <laughs> it does. It's, it's, you know, just stop and really take it in, you know. Because, you know, you see things all the time and just like, oh, okay, that's nice. But I wanted you to stop dead in your tracks and really study. 
It definitely does. And really that. understand what you were looking at, like. Thank you. Uh, the young man in the, the bottom that's in the limo. <laughs> I forgot your name. <laughs> All right, I'm not in a limo, I'm just in a regular road car. Uh, but I, um, we were actually, uh, actually with my pastor, we were uh, on our way to get some equipment uh, for church. Um, and so um, kind of a segue into what my, my work is about. Um, I had recently come to Christ in 2018 and I just had a great sense of peace uh, around now having this new perspective on my identity and while as a black man i still very much identified with my identity i still now knew this greater sense of who i was in coming to christ and i wanted to showcase that in my work and really give uh, people a sense of peace in um, this difficult time and so i titled this piece psalm 18 16 through 17. i'll read it uh, for you guys here it says he reached down from heaven and took hold of me he pulled me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. And I mean, we, we as Black people, I feel are oftentimes up against an enemy that is very big um, and not just on the, on the ground, but in the grand scheme that we are wrestling with a police department and, and that capacity and really understanding that um, they don't have the final say, that, that God is still good was something that I wanted to communicate through my work, um, mostly to give people a sense of peace in this time and a sense of love and knowing that their pain was not going without, um, without being noticed. Um, the other scripture that I pulled from was from Genesis, um, from the story of Cain and Abel, um, centered around how, in essence, he's killed his brother because of jealousy. And that was something to me that uh, really spoke to me because it, it very clearly at the very beginning of the Bible spoke to God's desire um, and, and moreover God's uh, passion for justice. And that was something that I really wanted to be present within the conversation um, and to be heard uh, by people is that uh, even though it can feel like sometimes well, where is God in these situations, knowing that he is a God who does seek justice. And as we are in this time and we're feeling this sense of sadness and questioning where is God, knowing that um, he does have the final say, um, even when we can't see it directly in front of us. Thank you, Jaquan. And I'll pick you back off that question again. Um, are there artists that you are inspired by to create this piece? This piece particularly, I uh, drew inspiration from, well, I, I generally draw inspiration from two artists stylist, style-wise, uh, and that would be uh, Keith Haring and um, Jean-Michel Basquiat. Yeah, and ultimately, Basquiat. Uh, thank you. Uh, ultimately, I just like their their idea around um, creating images that are not type specific to any um, particular uh, type of person, um, but really addressing the humanity in all of us. And so I use these sort of obscure figures that I, I ultimately hope will identify with all people. Thank you, Jaquan. Um, bottom right hand corner. Um, Jahana. Jahana? Am I pronouncing it correct? Hi, it's Jenna. Hi, Jenna. <laughs> so, so just to ask that question again, um, what inspired you to paint what you painted? She's wearing collage. Hers is okay, the one the the collage with Martin Luther King and some yes. different faces. A kinder world. For mine, I just wanted to show, mine is basically, my idea was because of like responses that I've gotten from just talking to people about issues and a lot of people feel like um, it's something that's new that's going on or it's like, why it's so dramatic? And I'm like, it's because like people are so upset because 
they've been fighting for the same thing over and over since we've existed in the Americas. So I wanted to just highlight um, just history repeating itself. So I used the newsprint from um, the slave ads and current events. Sorry, I can't speak the word. <laughs> um, <laughs> current events and news ads just to show how how long it's been going on and that it's not something new um, that's happening. And I also wanted to do something that was controversial as well that would get people talking and having conversation. Thank you, Jana. And artists that you're inspired by. For this piece, I wouldn't say I was specifically inspired by another artist, but I do um, enjoy Kehinde Wiley's work. I like how he portrays um, black people. I also, um, I would say Romare Bearden, he's a mixed media artist and he does like similar to like a collage style. Absolutely. Awesome. So why did you choose to leave the people black and white? So I often do that and with my students, I do black and white work. Um, I don't know why I choose that, but it just always leans towards black and white for African American Month or for Black History Month. I don't know if there was a specific reason. I just felt like those were the best um, colors to just go over top of the background. Okay. I love how you put, we just want a kinder world across the top. I thought that was uh, a unifying comment and I think everybody could agree with that one. Um, yeah. yeah. Joe, you wanna talk about what it was like to uh, photograph each of their processes from beginning to end? Absolutely. I've done a lot of uh, artist photography over the years, but this was kind of unique in that I was spending time with each of the four of them, which was a real, honestly, a real gift, uh, both in the, in the conversations. It's because a lot of this for me was not just about, you know, trying to find something positive from this. I think it was also coming to a deeper understanding of what what was going on. And I think a lot of that was embedded in all of their work. And to be able to spend the time to see things as they shifted, you know, through their conversations sometimes into this marvelous piece of art. You know, in many cases, in all four of these cases, at some point I saw something that didn't look anything at all like where it ended up. Um, so to be able to see that over time, hear the stories behind it, you know, that they're telling you now as well, but just to hear that and understand it, it was very important for me personally um, because you know, the, I was I, I was there when this was all happening, and I was, you know, when the Floyd riots were happening, and when I when we were cleaning up, the first thing I thought is I need to find something positive to do in all of this because this is just this is just too much. And then a number of conversations came out that ended up having this become an opportunity. And I think for me, you know, that that was incredibly powerful, but it also taught me that. There's beauty in the creation of art, and there's important messages in the creation of art that that are there, and there's there's value in capturing them. And since I've done this with the four of them, um, I've done a few others like this, and I'm going to take on another program this summer, spring or summer, that's going to be very similar to this. Um, that's going to have a lot of community outreach, and I think that that taking this the great effort from the four of them and turning it into something that's ongoing. Is something I feel strongly about and I'm excited to do. How did, um, well, I know that there was a lot of comments from passersby or uh, conversations that each of you had. Um, could each of you maybe say something about one of those conversations or how that impacted you? So how did all of this artwork affect your city? Did you see it make a positive change or a, what happened? Um, James, do you want to start? Do you have a story from a conversation? Jaquan. Jaquan, go ahead. You're fine. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I would ultimately say I, I got good reception just from people who uh, either saw it during the time when it was uh, initially hung during the actual riots, so people were, did feel a sense of gratitude that, you know, we were um, showcasing our talent in this way and really also a desire to see more of that um, even if they were seeing it and being done uh, 
uh, were, were like in that process where they weren't even able to see the entire image, but just them seeing us uh, participating in this beautification project was um, something that was inspiring to them. Anyone else um, have a question? Yeah, I just, uh, mine was more uh, just the people walking by as I was working on it. Uh, and, you know, because it's like a Dunkin' Donuts right across the street from where I was working. So a lot of people were going in and out and a couple times a day. So they go there in the morning and then see me starting the process and then come back in the afternoon and be like, well, I didn't see that going there. Or like, I didn't, you, you work really fast. So you're moving on, you know, pretty quickly. And, it, you know, just kind of stand there. So it was that kind of thing and ask questions and engage. So I kind of, I kind of <coughs> like that. And then the fact that, you know, um, there was like even after the fact, months and months, like people taking pictures and then tagging me in it, you know, and a lot of people out of state and just riding through, like that felt good. Um, because unfortunately, you know, sometimes I feel like, you know, our state is a state people ride through to get to other places. So it was nice just to see how many people just, you know, would stop and see. And then, you know, they would DM me and I could say, well, there's other murals and I would, you know, tell them where the other ones are. And then the, the, the other art that's not even associated with this that's in, down here, they would go get pictures in that. And so it just open, you know, that open that kind of dialogue and just getting people to kind of realize there is stuff here to, to see and do. So I think that's that's kind of the, the, the big picture for me, too. Wonderful, Louise or Jana? I got a wide range of feedback during my um, process. It was very, um, I would just say it was all very interesting. Um, <clears throat> I had somebody tell me as I was painting it, and they were like, in, in regards to the God earring, okay, I see you got the God earring, but like, what else is there to talk about? He didn't, he didn't even ask, like, I guess in regards to the soul, like, um, the focus of the painting or who the, who the muse was. It was just like, what else is there to talk about? Um, I had somebody ask me about the God earring and then tell me, uh, they thought Adam and Eve was a white man and a black woman. It was a lot of just theories and very far left conversations. I even had a guy come up and tell me about he do one of the people that killed one of the women I, names I wrote on the wall and kind of shrugged it off when I mentioned her name. I was like, oh, I wrote her name down actually. And he was just like, oh, okay, that's what's up. And then continued the conversation. And I was just kind of like, this is this is odd, but you know. Um, but overall, I mean, I got pretty good feedback. A lot of people stopped by. Um, I even got to meet um, the former NBA player Smush Parker. He actually was riding through. I was just like, "Well, can I stop and take a picture?" And we were talking and stuff, and we exchanged Instagrams. And then that's when I realized I was like, "Oh." playing the NBA? He was like, yes, ma'am. I said, okay, cool. He was, biking to DC. he was on his bike from Brooklyn going to DC. I was just like, wow, you know, good luck to you. And um, but overall, it was an interesting experience just being open to the public like that because I'm usually kind of reserved. Like my process is my process and I do that in private. So to be forced out in the open like that really opened me up to a lot of different dialogues and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for the whole experience. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to do your mural? It is the largest one in the uh, <laughs> It took me a week, spent like nine, 10 hour days every day. So a week total, roughly what, 70 hours, I guess. Okay. Jana? Would you like to answer that question as well? Yes. Um, I agree with uh, what she said too about like being put out in the open like during your process because I was extremely nervous the whole time because of just what I was putting up at first. And I know like they were getting weird because they're like, all I see is like inward this, inward that, like all this <laughs> racist stuff at first. So I was super nervous the whole time and I was scared that I was going to get like negative um feedback and i was scared that someone would come by and be like mad and destroy it but i actually got a lot of positive um feedback about it which i was really 
surprise and give out. Thanks, Dana. And Joe, um, in documenting the work, did you have conversations with people that you were taking the photos with that you would like to share about? The artists, of course, and then also like the people that you were encountering on the street. So pretty much when people I uh, would encounter on the street, they were they would focus on the work itself and end up speaking with one of the artists. Um, I think I know I think I, I know I know Erica pretty well, and so we had some of the longer conversations about this because I had a lot of questions about where she was going and what the story behind it was and and all of the names because she was creating this entire wall of names that I'm like, how do you how do you know how many are going to fit here? And she's like. Well, there's always more. And she would tell me a lot of the stories behind them. And and I'm thinking, you have all that, you'll have all that in your mind. Like what what is what is the impact of you as a person to be living a life where that is happening? And and she's like, This is my life, and this is why I'm doing this. This is why I'm creating. This is what drives me. And that, you know, on some level or another, all four of all four of the artists shared something with me that made me think this is an incredibly valuable human being art aside what's going on in their minds and in their hearts is you know as as jaquan was saying just just now it's it's an important it's an important thing to recognize in people especially right now because we're in a position where you know we're all in our bubbles and for me in particular, this was a good opportunity to get out of my bubble. And I've been doing a lot of that and I nothing but positive things to say about it. And I just want to chime in and say, Joe is probably one of the best photographers I have seen. Um, some of the way he captured some of that stuff all on his camera without Photoshop, just using uh, the lens and how, that's some of the best photography I've seen. So kudos to you as well. Thank you. Well. <laughs> well, I think we're going at about 30 minutes. Is Does anyone have any questions out here in the gallery that y'all would like to ask? Is there anything? Uh, yes. And I'll report. I've got a question about there's 400 names here. There's 400 names, uh, Erica. The, the women, roughly. The girls, that, roughly. Uh, over 400. What time frame were you looking at from how many years? That many names. Yes, that what time years. frame were you looking from? What were the oh, time current. Frame? It was it was current. They were mainly current. Like every day I went like, to the sun. Twenty twenty or with new names. So in like the last five years, something like that? Yeah, roughly. Yes. Mm -hmm. I did include some earlier names that I knew off top. I did go actually, I can't say they were all current. A lot of them were current, but some of them I went back. I'm gonna say 20, 30 years maybe, but it's spotty, so. Well, is there anything you'd like to say that we've left out of the questions? <laughs> is there anything else you'd like to ask? Well, I just wanna say we are so excited to have the art here and to tell the story. And I hope that this show travels. I think it needs to go to a lot more places and um, very impressed with all of your work and your abilities to communicate uh, your message. Thank you for sharing your talent. Thank you for sharing this. Oh, we're going to turn this around so you can see the gallery, the peanut gallery here. Um, let's see if I can see it. Let's see it. And if I don't, let's, you're in the show. Can you see everybody out there? Oh, We've got a crowd. Wow. There's people. Wow. So, <laughs> so, yay. <laughs> so, and we do have uh, school tours and some other things, uh, different community groups meeting. Um, the Ministerial Alliance, there's about 50 ministers is meeting here this Wednesday. Um, we've got um, two schools coming, and the city of Longview is doing a tourism group. So we're excited to share this story. Um, so everybody, tag it on your Facebooks, get your friends to come see it, and let's try to get this show to go some other places. So um, thank you for sharing that.